Hello, everyone. Will Heider, Construction Technical Specialist here with ATG, back for another ACC Tech Talk. Today, we're going to be looking at how to set up the Assets Toolset as part of ACC Build, specifically the Asset Categories and the uh, Status Sets. So we're going to start over here in the Settings area at the uh, Categories tab. Uh, the models tab, which appears first within the settings area, uh, that workflow will be covered in another tech talk. So the first setting we're going to configure here are the asset categories. You see, I already have uh, five set up right now for my main uh, MEP trades, uh, fire suppression, and room status. The process to create a category here is pretty easy. We're just gonna go up here to this create category button. We're gonna give this asset category a name. Uh, we'll create a, let's say we wanna track flooring. So we'll create a flooring asset here. It's gonna ask us to pick a status set and also set up any uh, custom fields. We can do both of these later uh, once the asset category is created, but just know you can also pre-configure those uh, right here in the dialog box. So all I'm going to do now is hit create, and you see that flooring status appears right here. If I want to add in subcategories to this uh, category here, I'll just open up the hierarchy using that arrow on the left, and I'll create a subcategory. So let's say I got vinyl flooring, not vinyl. I got vinyl that I want to create. I also got wood flooring and I got tile flooring. And again, you see for each of these subcategories, we can even configure uh, custom fields that are specific to uh, the subcategory. So, okay, now we have a nice hierarchy here for this particular asset category. So with that, let's go back up to the parent level which is this case is flooring. So you see here, when we open up this category, there's a few things we can set up here. Yes, we can obviously edit the name, assign it a specific status set if we had one created for flooring, which we will do here in just a minute. We can also edit the visibility permissions so that just, um, let's say specific uh, trades, in this case our flooring subcontractor is the only trade that can see uh, this particular category. And we can also add in at this stage any uh, form templates from our form library. So let's say we know there's going to be a specific uh, flooring uh, QAQC checklist that we've uploaded. We can add that right here using the add button. And you see it's going to take us to the form library of the project. And again, if there's any custom fields specific to flooring, uh, we could add those right here as well. We can do a lot of the same stuff at the subcategory level as well. So now I'm in uh, the tile uh, subcategory. You see, we can still set the we can still set a form template and custom fields. The only things we cannot change, however, are the visibility permissions and the status set those two settings can only be configured at the category level. So if I go back to flooring, you see status set and visibility permissions are changeable. And if I go into the subcategory, they are not. So when it comes to deciding how you're gonna organize your assets, uh, keep in mind, especially when it comes to this status set, that you can only change that at a category level. So something to consider. With that, um, let's go right to the status set tab uh, right here. So you see I have the default status set that comes with ACC um, already set up. So if I click that drop down, you see it's a pretty general set of different asset statuses. And if I go into the room status one, it, this one is more customized. So because this is room status, I have different ones for framing, in-wall, 
drywall, and uh, finishes. The process of creating a stat set is also fairly simple, uh, in a sim and we create it in a similar manner to how we create categories, subcategories. We're going to start by hitting Create Status Set, and it's going to ask us to give a status set a name. So we will continue with our flooring example right now. And you see now we can start configuring these statuses. So we have the ability to set up to 21 different statuses in a status set. The only limitation to that being the number of colors that are available in ACC, which is 21. So in the case of flooring, continuing this example, we'll say material on material ordered. Material on site. Material installed. Again, this is a very basic status set. Um, you can make this as detailed or as basic as you want to. Um, obviously, you have to give the different statuses a name. The description field is optional. And once you've created a status set, you can always reorder and reorganize as needed by grabbing the uh, eight dots uh, just to the left of the color selection, which again, we can change the colors as well here if we need to. And once I've configured it, I'll hit create. And now what I will do to apply this flooring status set to my flooring asset category is go back over to categories, select the flooring category and assign that flooring status set to it. And you see in that status set column, uh, it has now been updated to flooring. The only other two tabs we're going to cover here in settings, uh, apart from uh, models, which again will be another video, are custom fields. Now, custom fields are going to always appear at the end um, of the particular asset whenever you set them up. You see I have four configured uh, right now. If I want to create a new one, I go up here to the create custom field. I got to give it a title and a type. You see we have six different types uh, we can choose from. And then optional, I can give the custom field a particular description. These are going to appear at the end of the asset whenever you select it. But we can also pre-configure pre -configure the custom fields right here using this uh, add custom field link down here. If I click on that, you see those are my four custom fields that I've created, and I can select as many or as few as I need to to add them. So that's custom fields. The final setting we're going to discuss today is permissions. Permissions and assets are fairly simplistic compared to some other parts of ACC build. When you come into permissions, and you're setting this up for the first time, only this admin level is going to appear. And this is just going to be the project admins. If I go to add a member here, um, which again, I can do at the user role or company level, we always recommend at ATG you use the role-based permissions as those are more transient across projects and also helps when you're setting up project templates. And then you can see the different uh, levels here when it comes to uh, viewership. Most of the time, um, we're going to want to give uh, team members for a specific trade the edit permission. And if you remember when we were talking about different categories, we can further configure the permissions so that only certain trades can see certain statuses and certain assets. And then the only other permissions are create and then uh, manage, which the project admins have uh, by default. So again, make sure you're really analyzing who is going to be leveraging this tool set uh, before you go on and set up uh, permissions beyond the project admin level. So that will do it for today's uh, Tech Talk. Um, I thank you all again for your time and attention and look forward to seeing you 
in future Tech Talks. Hey there, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of the other content on our channel.